Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, June 20th, 2016. Um, if I could, uh, the Board of Selectmen and our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, would like to uh, open the meeting with a moment of silence and recognition of the many lives lost in the senseless tragedy, tragedy as well as uh, victims injured in, the, in Orlando last week. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. First uh, item on the agenda, vote preliminary denial of the Comcast license. Uh, first, I turn it over to our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so we have here tonight um, three members of the team that's been bargaining with Comcast, myself, Town Council Doug Heim, former Town Council and Chair of the Cable Advisory Committee, John Marr, and we also are represented by Attorney Peter Epstein, who has a specialty in uh, cable license negotiations. Uh, this is, tonight what we're asking you for is really more of a, a formality to allow us to continue to negotiate with Comcast, but I'll let uh, Mr. Marr, Attorney Marr, speak to you in more detail. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Manager. The, uh, the excuse me, I'm a little bit, a little bit of horse because of the cold. Uh, because the uh, Comcast license expires on July 21st and you won't be meeting <coughs> presumably uh, before then, we do, we do need to take some action. You simply can't let it expire. So because we have not, as the manager indicated, because we have not reached an agreement, this is really a formality. A preliminary denial is not that uncommon when you haven't reached an agreement. Uh, we, we will continue to meet the customer base for Comcast. We'll see no changes. The, the uh, programming will continue. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail about the issues in dispute, but I think it's common knowledge that they rate, uh, essentially uh, relate to ACMI and what uh, sort of programming public access could be provide, which is a very valuable resource for the town. Uh, I should, I might add, uh, we're very disappointed with Comcast's position with regard to uh, making, uh, you know, uh, ACMI continue to be a vibrant uh, community resource. Uh, none of the items that we're requesting would add a dime, uh, or would detract a dime from Comcast's uh, bottom line. These are all pass-throughs, pennies, literally pennies on the dollar. Uh, and it's very unfortunate that Comcast's position is really retrogressive from the existing contract. They're not even willing to provide the existing contract. So uh, we're very disappointed, but uh, at some point I assume we'll reach an agreement, but this is a preliminary denial, and we would uh, respectfully ask that uh, you make that vote. Uh, before I sit, on a personal note, uh, every time I come here, be it, well, on, well even when I'm not here, on 7.15 on Monday night, B, I'm laying on the beach in Truro, or at the pool up at the Kentwood. I always say to myself, Johnny, there's only one place I'd really rather be. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Here. <laughs> and one other note, if I could, and I really feel strongly about this, much more seriously. Uh, I want to congratulate the Board of Selectmen and the town manager for running a very first-class operation in this town, and I think it, nothing could be more evident after the vote of the uh, taxpayers and the voters of the town. It was a reflection of what we want for our school system, but it would, the, the quantum of the vote speaks to something else, and I think along with the school committee and my colleagues on the permanent building committee who continue to bring projects in under budget and on time, everything starts with the town manager and the board of selectmen. And kudos to uh, all of the uh, leaders of the, uh, of the override, uh, the debt exclusion effort, but it begins with the Board of Selectmen, and my hat's off to you, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Greeley? Yes, uh, so, uh, thank you, John. I personally can take very little credit for this, but it is, uh, it's, it's overwhelming you know, we keep talking about old and New Arlington and all of this. Well, uh, New Arlington was out there and, and very well led, might I say, uh, by many uh, in this room as well. But uh, when I think of what it took us to pass the first overrides and debt exclusions, it's, it's just it's a, it's, it's a tribute to this community. But that said, on this Comcast license, take me through the worst case scenario. 
So we go all the way to, okay, we're not going to renew your license. What happens? That, I mean, that is always a possibility. It happens very rarely. Right. But if that would be the case, that we have a final denial, then uh, Comcast would appeal directly to the licensing authority, and we would have a hearing before you. Uh, it would be a formal adjudicatory hearing. You'd be well apprised of the uh, framework for that and the ground rules. Uh, but it's a very, that would be a very serious matter, and uh, it's likely they would be taking testimony. Uh, it's likely that Comcast would present a bevy of attorneys flying up from New Jersey. Uh, it is a most serious matter. Uh, it is not a place that any of us want to go, uh, but, until, uh, but if and until we get from Comcast a legitimate, fair to both sides license, Mr. Greeley, it is a possibility. Ha has it happened in a community? It's not happened in any community in Massachusetts that I'm aware of, but it has happened in some communities. Well, it may have ha actually, it may have happened once in Massachusetts. And um, I'm sorry to bring this up so late in the game, but I'd like to add something to ask you three to negotiate with Comcast is I really would like us to see a senior rate Many other communities, Comcast, uh, and we actually have one here in- We uh, have one with RCN as with it is. RCN, yeah. so- uh, It's a modest one, but there is one. It is a recognition that some people are on fixed incomes, yeah. and uh, it's a legitimate request, and uh, the manager is the head of our bargaining team, but uh, I think I, we could rec safely say we'd recommend to him uh, that we'll include it in the next round of negotiations. Thank you. And I, so I move denial. Is that what's my what's my vote, John? Uh, the the vote is uh, uh, move no. the uh, proposed vote as as it's provided in the uh, town manager's uh, memo. Yeah, the board of selectmen and I move the board of selectmen in its role as statutory issuing authority for the town of Arlington is hereby issuing a preliminary assessment of denial of Comcast and Massachusetts One Inc.'s cable television renewal proposal to the town of Arlington, dated February 11, 2016. The Board of Selectmen will issue a written statement of reasons in accordance with to a 7 CMR 3.06, <laughs> 3, something like that, detailing the reasons for its preliminary assessment of denial and hereby authorizes the Chair to sign said statement. Second. Motion by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. <clears throat> and I just want to say uh, on the other matter that you brought up, I, I do want to highlight and thank many citizens, including like our former town council, John Marr, Precinct 14 Rocks, who really was out there. We had a lot of, you know, parents of school-aged children um, who were involved in this effort. But um, I can tell you from my precinct all the way up until election night, John Marr once again was out there involved and actively canvassing. And I think that's also a good testament when we talk about New Arlington, that us old Arlingtons um, really are still uh, staying involved and I think we're reaching that base and we're all coming together. So I want to thank you, John, for, you know, well, like you said, we, you could be Johnny look, on the Cape. Well, we followed your leadership, Madam Chair, and that of Clarissa and oh, the other chair you. of the uh, committee. All right, group hug, come on. Group hug, group hug. And, uh, and I, I really want, I just want to highlight in, as we go forward over the next two years that um, uh, we, we take the uh, de debt exclusion seriously in, in our fiduciary responsibility around that, and I was able to co-chair this effort as well as the 2011 override with Mr. Foskett, Charlie Foskett, where uh, myself and the Board of Selectmen and the town manager said we wouldn't come back for three years. Uh, it's now been six years. It's looking like we probably won't come back nine years perhaps even more than that. And I only say that as, as a, a, a declaration to, to the voters of Arlington that we take it very seriously that when we go to the voters for a debt exclusion or, or an override, that we've looked at every other option possible, that this is something that we need um, to, to move forward as well as we don't just do it expeditiously, that that's our first and last response to solve any operating costs or renovation, rebuild costs. It's really our last resort. And I, I think also a reflection in that vote, um, I think and I hope that, that the voters also recognize that. And we have such an overwhelming yes on all three questions. It's a well-run town. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Grilly, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. Good to see you. Thank you.
Good Thank evening. You. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, we have a discussion, conservation restriction, Washington Street, Brattle Terrace. We have our former colleagues, Selectman Emeritus, Clarissa Rowe, and Miss Nellie Aikenhead, and some others. Yes, and the people that own the land, <laughs> Laura and George. Oh, thank you. Um, we're here tonight only as an informational session. We're not asking for a vote. It's just a preliminary discussion, so you can ask about this parcel of land that you had on your desk about five minutes before the meeting. <laughs> Our apologies. Um, we're representing the Arlington Land Trust, and if this works out, this would be the third conservation restriction in Arlington. The first one was put on um, a home on Brantwood Road by John and Patricia Warden many, many moons ago. The second one was up at Sims, and that was quite a large one, and, and this would be the third. And I'm going to turn it over to Nellie and um, Laura and George to answer any of your questions and go through it. But we're not looking for a vote tonight, just informational. So I think most of the information is actually in front of you, but I thought I'd just give you a two-second summary. And then if you have questions, you can ask me. Or here we have the property owners themselves. They would have all the answers, I'm sure. The conservation restriction would protect um, the bulk of their property, which in six parcels totals an acre and a half, which is a lot of land for Arlington. It's very woodsy on the slopes. There's open fields and lawns on the top, so it's good habitat for a variety of animals. And also, it's right along the bike path, so it provides a nice woodsy buffer there. And it can be seen from a lot of points in town. Like, if you cross Mass Ave and look back, you can see it because it's up on a hill. So um, it's R2 zoning. There's 600 feet of frontage, 63,000 square feet, and it's a mix of habitat. Um, our hope is that we could get the CR done and recorded by the end of the year. It's a pretty ambitious but doable timetable. If we do that, you'd probably have a draft in front of you sometime in July or sometime in August. We'd try to get it to the state by September. And then there's, you know, there's turnaround with every, every time we put it out, there's turnaround and edits. Oh, and the Conservation Commission, of course, would be involved. It requires approval of the grantors, the Arlington Land Trust, the Board of Selectmen, the Conservation Commission, and the um, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We've reached out to the Conservation Commission in a similar way and expect to be meeting with them relatively soon. Mr. Dunn. Uh, I have several questions that are mostly from my own ignorance about the, about, about the process. So, um, What's the role of the Arlington Land Trust in this? Well, the, the, there's always a grantor and a grantee, okay. and the Arlington Land Trust would be a grantee. In other words, we would hold the conservation restriction jointly with the town of Arlington, so we would co-hold it. Okay. And what was what if this goes through? What would be the impact in terms of, like you know, taxes and all that stuff? How does that work? Well, like, as you know, it's a town by town basis. A lot of this land. Right now, there's six parcels. The total assessed value is around $2 million. I would say, these are just rough figures, but around a million, one point, no, around 1.5 is in the two houses and the house lots, so that presumably wouldn't really change. The most of the rest of the land is assessed as undeveloped. There's one parcel that's assessed, assessed as developable. So presumably, when you put a CR on it, it becomes undevelopable, so that might have a slight change. It depends on how the assessor reassesses it after the CR. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mr. Carroll. And just to clarify, this is, um, <coughs> I would say six separately, well, so it's the entire orange area here. The or it it's that whole, the orange and the, the orange is this, uh, the more, the orange that's outline. a slope map, that's a slope map, so the orange is the steepest slopes. Everything in the red squares is included. The, the red, yeah. The there print. would be a building envelope, so not the entire, 1.5 wouldn't be protected. There's a building envelope in the middle where they have their house and their garage and all that and where there's another house that's just going to remain as is. And it appears from this map that it does directly abut an existing conservation parcel as well. Right. Right. Yes. right. And the bike path, which I tried to write in, the bike path's right there. Mm -hmm. So basically, the bottom of Washington Street is kind of a dirt road. Yeah. Right. It kind of abuts the bike path in a way. Mr. Grilling. So I'm colorblind, but I'll, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. 
But what, what, what if they want to sell it? So does this mean the houses can't be touched or sold or rebuilt or the, the, no, the no, buildings? No, no, the houses the can, oh, they can transfer. What, basically what happens is there'll be a building envelope which has yet to be established around the houses and there'll be certain, they can do whatever they want in the building envelope, but it's okay. going to be pretty net limited. So but probably not on the existing land, not on the buildings, rest of the, land. Okay. the rest of the land will be protected. And then there are prescribed things they can and can't do out there. Like they probably can garden and there, you know, it's all written out in a long, complicated document. Okay. But it would be defined. The town would have to agree. The owners would have to agree. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I, I see we have the owners, uh, Laura Morissette and George Blazinski. Yeah, right here. Right here. I, I don't know if there's anything you want to say. I, I certainly want to. Uh, uh, well, it's a unique uh, piece of land in Arlington. And uh, every time we have visitors, they just, they were a nice place. Uh, so we thought about preserving it the way it is. That's our main objective, really. We learned that we can actually save some money. We were surprised by that. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that, um, our primary goal. And, you know, okay. wa wa one time we looked outside, there was something yellow, went to see, and it was some people camping. They found a secluded area, <laughs> they, and they believed that it was a public land, but they were just camping there, all set up. So we said, sure, you can stay there because it doesn't affect us. Just clean up after yourself. <laughs> well, I just want to commend you and, and, and thank you for your initial steps uh, in terms of generosity to making sure that um, this parcel uh, for the environmental and other uh, reasons stated that that can be uh, safeguarded in the future, um, as well as what you just said in terms of um, the love of the town of Arlington and, and, and yeah, what you enjoy. Almost 40 years in that place and then before we lived in Arlington as well. Well, I, on behalf of the board, we all uh, commend you for your generosity and thinking long term when we're perhaps none of us will, will be but a memory, but this will be something that <laughs> lasts longer than me. Um, so uh, I, I know you don't need a vote tonight, but I just wanted to um, wish you m much success on the journey ahead of you. and. Let's see what we can do to get everything done by, to get this done by the end of the year. And thank you so much for this generous contribution. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having you. us. Nice see you. Have a good much. summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have, I think it keeps going off, so I'm going to go back to paper. <laughs> Sorry, consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meeting, June 6, 2016. We have revised. Uh, Minutes on our desk here tonight, reappointments, all these terms, terms to expire June 30th, 2019. The Cemetery Commission, William McCarthy, Conservation Commission, Curtis Connors, Nathaniel Stevens, Charles Tyrone, Constable Richard Boyle, Human Rights Commission, Sherry Barron, Mel Goldsby, Goldsipe, I apologize, Mel. Library Board of Trustees, Joyce Radosha, Open Space Committee, Anne LaRoya, David Wright, Park and Recreation Commission, Leslie Mayer, Trust Fund Commission, Augusta Haydick. We have appointments of new election workers, Megan DeCourcy, 7 Cheswick Road, Democrat Precinct 15, Cal Proctor, 291 Appleton Street, Unenroll, Precinct 19, Teresa Proctor, 291 Appleton Street, Democrat, Precinct 19, Joy Spafadora, Spaf, Spadorafa. Spadorifa, sorry, 33 Lennon Road, Democrat Precinct 21. We have for approval, Arlington Center for the Arts, open studios, poll banners, Linda Showmaker on behalf of the Arlington Center for the Arts, its executive director. Approval, ZA, alteration of premise for sidewalk cafe permit at ZA Restaurant 138 Mass Ave. And we also have from our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, FY 2016 year-end transfers. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Byrne. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. Uh, is there anyone here to speak to any of these consent agenda items? If you could just come up to the microphone and... Oh, just for when the studio's going to get there. Just for, I'm sorry? Just for our when the studio's going to get there. We're there. <laughs> yeah. We're there. Look how efficient we are. Thank you. I'm Pam Shanley, and I've um, done Arlington Open Studios for the last 17 years. So having these poll banners is really helpful to get the word out. Um, and just in case you don't know, it's the second weekend. It's the weekend after Columbus Day weekend in October. And we'll have over 80 artists, visual artists, selling their work. Um, we'll have about four musical groups playing. We'll have food from area restaurants, and you're all invited. 
and it's two days, Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 5, and having these banners is so helpful to get the word out because, as you know, people need reminders, so this is a great reminder, so thank you. Thank you. Any, could, could Mr. Grayley? Do you know when, when you'd like them, like from when to when, dates-wise? Um, September would be great to have them up in the beginning of September and through the event. Do, how do we figure out? We always, I think we generally defer to the office. Mrs. Kropalka? Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as we can, obviously, the more time the better, but whatever it is within your, okay. I'll talk. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Pam. Okay. On a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further questions? If not, all those that say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Next, we have agenda item nine, Arlington Cultural Council, Gabrielle Morog. Term. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm, I've lived in Arlington for 10 years. I've never been to anything like this. It's very impressive. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it really is. Um, I've served on boards before. I work in corporate America, and I just wanted to make a contribution to my community and join the Arlington mm. Cultural Center, uh, Cultural Council. So thank you for the opportunity. If you have any questions for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and thank you for coming tonight. We just ask for initial appointments that we get to see the person face to face as well as to Definitely. say, God bless you for doing this because um, it's quite a task you're about to embark on. Um, that's what I've heard, but that's okay. I work in corporate America. You've yet to I find guess. a committee or task force in Arlington that is a name only. You, you're going to be doing a lot of work, but certainly have uh, perused, through, looked through your curriculum vitae resume. Um, you have a lot of attributes that definitely will complement um, the committee. Um, and I really do appreciate you doing this because this is part of the reason why the fabric of what Arlington is. is Thank you for the like opportunity. You. I appreciate it. And this was very interesting. Thank you for letting me sit in. <laughs> no worries. Good uh, day. Uh, first, we have to have a motion of approval by Lori. Second. Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Grilly. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Have a good evening. unanimous Thank vote. You Thank, Thank you. you. I loved her energy as she jumps up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, has anyone signed up for Citizens Open Forum? Okay, I'll, then I'll read the preamble and then. Uh, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board should neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation. In accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established, it should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. And I believe we have. If you could just come to the microphone. We know who you are, but if you could just say your name for the record for everyone else watching. Hello, my name is Darcy Devney. I live at 110 Thorndike Street. Um, and uh, in your correspondence received, you have the letter from my husband and myself about eliminating the basketball court from Magnolia Park plans. I would like to start by saying I think there are lots of positive things about the Magnolia Park plans, but I think that the residents of the neighborhood have been really ignored and disrespected in this whole process, and I'm hoping there's something we can do about it, or rather, you can do about it. I want to clearly outline the lack of communication from the Parks and Rec Department to the Magnolia Park neighborhood. Parks and Recs have talked repeatedly about how this was an open and inclusive process. It was neither. The PRC director claims that there were, quote, months of public meeting and consultation with the park's users, end quotes. I'm sure that putting the words Magnolia Park on a department's regular monthly meeting agenda satisfies the minimum legal requirement of being called a public meeting, but I think we can all agree that it certainly doesn't satisfy even, minim even minimal ethical or democratic standards. Since those regular PRC meetings never had more than four members of the public, and only two of those people were there for Magnolia Park after the decisions had already been made, those were not public meetings. There were three real public meetings, an ideas meeting, a drafts meeting, and a final meeting, but residents were not notified of any of these meetings. The only people who were notified were the people who attended the first meeting and the Friends of Magnolia Park. How are the abutters supposed to know that they needed to check the agenda of a specific department? No one was warned that the department was making long-term decisions about the park next door. 
is every resident of Arlington expected to subscribe by email to every single department's monthly agendas and read them closely to make sure that the town is not planning to make permanent changes to an abutting town property. It's in the bylaws that a person seeking a special permit from the ARB must notify all abutters. It's in the bylaws that the Conservation Commission must notify any direct abutters. And in fact, that is the first official notification that the direct abutters got was from the Conservation Commission about the hearing that was held last week for Magnolia Park. So how can a town department get away with making changes that affect residents, including property values, rental values, without a single notification to the people who actually live next to the park, let alone residents of the general neighborhood who use the park. I'm not gonna go down the list of all the places that there weren't any notifications, but I will say the first public input meeting was held on 27 October 2015. The final designs were presented at the third public input meeting on the 26th of January 2016. So this was a 90-day process start to finish. Most proximal stakeholders were left in the dark. It's a catch-22, isn't it? Anyone who protests now is told it's too late. You had your chance. But if homeowners were never notified about the meetings, they had basically zero chance of finding out in time to have any input whatsoever. Sorry, 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 sorry. So because residents were never notified in time, they have no rights when they finally do find out. I am appealing to you tonight because that is not a fair way to treat citizens of Arlington. As a neighbor said, it seems that if you don't play soccer, have a dog, or win the garden plot lottery, there's less and less room for you in our parks. Another example, Arlington spending $75,000 for a basketball court that is unnecessary and unwanted because a few people at the first meeting said they would use it more if it were in better condition. Arlington's using up 2,300 plus square feet for a basketball court in the second smallest court in Arlington, a park that is also asked to be one of only two community gardens in Arlington, which is why the Don Redwood was slated for destruction. I presume at this point everybody knows about the Don Redwood problem. The proof that many, resident, many, many residents were and are interested in exactly what gets done during the Magnolia Park renovations is in the Don Redwood petition. This petition was started June 5th when locals noticed that the tree suddenly had an orange X spray painted on it. Less than two weeks later, more than 400 people had signed that petition. That's 400 people who felt they should have been notified about the changes planned to Magnolia Park and had many ideas that no one ever heard versus the 32 people who actually found out about the meetings in time to attend them. As long-term <coughs> residents of Arlington, we feel completely disrespected. As regular voters of Arlington, we feel completely ignored. As taxpayers whose property values are affected by neighborhood amenities such as Magnolia Park, our rights were abrogated by being completely left out of the process, whether inadvertently or not. Now the residents of the Magnolia neighborhood must endure the ongoing and permanent consequences, good or bad, without any recourse, unless you do something. Thank you, Darcy. You have any questions? Nope. No, no. <laughs> well, I, I would have two. One is, uh, so, I mean, I hear what you're saying and, you know, notifications, et cetera, but why is, are you specifically against the basketball court? What, is, what are your reasons for not wanting a basketball court there? Well, as, as I showed you in that diagram, there's plenty of them already as amenities go in Arlington. So it's a very small park, and if you look at the, the designs, you'll see that everything's kind of shoehorned in there in an effort to have it done. The community gardens, for example, could have expanded in a different direction, and there wouldn't have been the Don Redwood problem at all, which hasn't actually been solved, if there was a little more room in the park to move around. Furthermore, the backboard is now going to be a little farther away from me, thank you, and right next to, still right next to, my neighbor's bedroom window. And she was never consulted, never told, nothing and I think that's that's just disrespectful I can't understand how you cannot tell direct abutters what's going on okay thank you and uh, chair to town council what actually is our authority here on this the board of selectmen so I think this is a little bit 
uh, far afield for a meeting, uh, mm -hmm. ironically, where this wasn't noticed as a part of the discussion. But mm -hmm. the, um, you know, Parks and Rec Commission has general jurisdiction over their properties and the decisions that are made there. And the Board of Selectmen can comment on anything the Board of Selectmen wants to comment on. But um, I, I, I wouldn't think that this is something that would come under the purview of, of, of the Board under ordinary circumstances. They don't have final authority. Um, for that, we're not going to go back and forth. I gave you more. I gave you okay. close to six minutes. So, no. and I would just uh, I'm going to call on my. Oh, you done, Mr. I, I just want to finish with. So I certainly would would before I'd make any comment, want to meet with the Parks and Rec Commission, and see if there's neighbors there that want a basketball court. Sorry. And um, I, I would just say, um, I'm somewhat cognizant of this issue, uh, as well as uh, Park and Rec Commission meetings having followed them myself, and I'm just going to respectfully disagree in terms of uh, their getting notice out. Um, I want to say just since I've been following it, it might be close to two years, a little over a year and a half that they've been going through this process, uh, getting out prof proper notification, um, having public meetings, which you did cite, and I, I respect the fact that you, you say we, um, and if you have any names of people, of butters, uh, likewise, besides yourself, Talk which to I my doubt, neighbors. I, I agree. Um, but, I, but I have followed along in this process, and um, I know that Joe Conley and the Park and Rec Commissioners um, have spent close to two years on this issue um, and gotten the word out as much as they can, had public meetings, um, having another one upcoming, um, and I know they take their duties and responsibilities as serious as we all do on boards and commissions and um, certainly will work towards uh, whatever the common good is in the end but um, I'm gonna again respectfully really disagree with probably 75 percent of your your characterizations in my opinion mischaracterizations of the process as well as um, Park and Rec Commission we do choose these individuals and um, I will call on my colleague, Mr. Dunn, and then if I could um, ask Mr. Chapdelaine if he has any comment. Um, just having dealt with, you know, parks and the like um, getting renovated, I know there's nobody out there not trying to get information out. Is it a perfect uh, layout that you can reach everybody all the time? No, it's not, but um, I really feel that uh, you've, you've cited at least a year's worth of meetings um, that have occurred. Um, yourself and your neighbors certainly could have gone to those. Um, I think it might be sometimes you see all these meetings and you're, you're like, uh, perhaps don't, not yourself, but neighbors understand the um, importance and of going to these things. Uh, but there's been close to two years energy spent on this in discussions and public meetings, so I feel confident. I would not want to send any sort of um, uh, individual message on behalf of myself to the Park and Rec Commission because um, I really feel that they, they've lived up to the standard that we asked them to in conducting matters like this. But um, Mr. Dunn, and then if I could, Mr. Chapdelaine. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, uh, so you, you appeared to be disappointed when I didn't have a question for you. Uh, <laughs> well, you usually do, Dan. <laughs> uh, actually, well, the thing is, is that like, so one of the things that I like is to hear both sides of a conversation. And I haven't had the opportunity here. And so I've, I've heard, I've read, and so what I do from here is I, you know, I make you know, a couple phone calls, I look at a couple things. So I don't have a reaction for you because I don't feel like I know enough yet. So um, I, I heard you, but I, I don't have a response or an action at this time. Mr. Carroll. And I'd also like to say that, you know, <clears throat> I don't have a question for you right now for much the same reason. But also, as, as the chair said, you know, except in ex extraordinary circumstances, we don't usually engage in back and forth during Citizens Open Forum. Right. It's a time for people to raise their, their concerns. I will say that on principle, um, <clears throat> I'm generally very hesitant to, to try to direct the way that other boards and commissions carry out their, their the, you know, the commission of their duties. We certainly have the opportunity to affirm or not affirm that the manager's appointments as, as there's turnover in those boards when they come up. But I, I, on principle, I'm generally very hesitant to, uh, to, to do that. But we certainly do have sometimes conversations with our colleagues on other boards, and, and I'm hesitant to, to criticize it on here. And final word? The informational piece I was going to add for the board is construction is slated to start this week. So any action would really cancel the project for this whole year. 
mm -hmm. <clears throat> to go back to design, uh, the design would, I would assume, would be to, such that we'd have to rebid the project uh, and delay a year. Uh, obviously, you know, if the Parks and Rec Commission felt that was necessary, that could be done, but there would be, there would be a great deal of upheaval involved in stopping this and changing it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Okay, with that, we'll go to agenda item 10. Request for a third st space on-street overnight parking at 20 Sutherland Road. Is Adela Mamani? Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? Okay, um, my name is Adela Mamani. I've been living here in the city of Arlington for almost 11 years. And the reason that I'm here is because I would like to have, um, I don't know if you permit uh, a third space for overnight parking. We don't have a driveway and we are allowed only to have uh, two spaces to park in front of the house. Okay. And the third space would be for my daughter that she went back from college, so. We don't have my space. Um, yeah. and, uh, um, just let you know, and you may be aware, we have a report from uh, the Arlington Police Department uh, uh, recommending not supporting uh, granting this third request. I, I will tell you, it's v extremely rare, and I'm trying to think myself of where we've actually um, supported three requests because one of the sort of tenants, besides, you know no possibility of a driveway and uh, topographical issues. Mm -hmm. The area that the house occupies is also not granting overnight parking beyond the actual physical footprint of where that house is so that you don't, you won't be overnight parking to the left or the right in front of another residence as well as we also take into account um, what impacts, if any, this would have on the property across the street, which does have a handicap uh, parking space delineate, delineated there for someone that has handicap residents in that home, as well as they have a larger, not just your standard car that they're parking in that handicap spot, they're parking the larger, um, it's not a bus, but a larger vehicle there, and having this directly across the street uh, definitely would affect that. So um, I, I can't make a motion be, because I, I am the chairman, but I just want to explain to you uh, just my years having served on the board. It's very rare and I can't think of one case where we've granted three overnight parking to one residence and then all those other issues that I brought up that as long as they're in front of the actual residence, which this would not be, as long as they're not impeding any safety concerns, which we do have the handicap uh, parking spot across the street with the large vehicle for several um, individuals who live there. But um, I would look to um, my colleagues and Mr. Byrne. Um, so I, I agree with everything that uh, the Ms. Mahan said, I do have, Marie, who would we call about, or who should she call about potentially renting a spot at Herd Field parking lot? Okay, so I think uh, that that's probably, <coughs> so what, what uh, Officer Rateau recommended was potentially seeing if there was a space to rent at Herd Field overnight, which is not too far away. So I, I would, um, so I will move no action. Um, and, and I wish there was a, a better way forward for you to have a spot outside. But I think that um, going down and trying to get a spot at Herd Field might be, um, might be an appropriate place for that third car. So I will move no action and I hope that you'll take um, us up on that and I hope there's a spot there. Second. Second. A motion, no action by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Any further questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? So if you call the Selectman's office tomorrow, Mer she'll get the information? Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I just want to point one thing out. On the letter from uh, Marie Bell, Mm -hmm. She quotes, previous owners of number 20 Sutherland Road were granted a permit under a hardship as they were having difficulty selling the house without parking. Absolutely is not true. This sure. board does not grant overnight parking spaces to help the sale of a house. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that's just a little inaccurate, but mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Because I was on the board. <laughs> Um, agenda item 11, approval, draft alcohol license suspension decision, common ground, 319 Broadway. 
Um, we have our town council attorney Heim, who I want to thank for uh, working with all members of the board on this, <clears throat> I won't say complicated issue, but certainly an issue that had many different parameters to it um, and being able to sort of encapsulate it um, and bring our thoughts and votes to uh, pen and paper. So if I could first, Attorney Heim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the decision, the draft decision before you, I know there were a few iterations that were uh, communicated to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, it was a <coughs> complicated discussion only insofar as the board put a lot of thought and had a lot of back and forth as to what they thought was the most appropriate uh, form of uh, discipline and the extent of discipline after it made its findings. So I, I tried to encapsulate the board's uh, discussion as uh, far as uh, I understood it. Um, I understand that there might be some uh, different recollections about what the final motion was in terms of days uh, to be total days served. I'm sorry, not total days served, but uh, total days on the suspension. Uh, but there is agreement that there's a 14-day suspension, that there's a uh, three additional days to be served. My understanding is that there's a little bit of disagreement about whether there's a five-day suspension uh, with two of those to run concurrent with the 14 days or not. But otherwise, I think that this uh, encompasses the consensus of the board in terms of the evidence the board found probative, the board's uh, receipt and treatment of the license holders arguments, as well as the license holders stated intent to serve all 17 ultimate days that they must have their, uh, their alcohol service shut down uh, consecutively, even though that's not necessarily uh, what was moved upon by the board. So any questions or comments, um, I'd, I'd be happy to, to modify the decision as the board uh, thinks is appropriate, but if this encapsulates the board's understanding and uh, perspective on this, okay. it's ready to go. And before I call on Mr. Grilly, I do want to note that um, I've heard from many residents, um, I mean, honest to goodness I have, uh, in terms of you know common ground, this being a second offense, um, the seriousness with which this board and our uh, town officials uh, take this matter. And I, I just want to commend um, Attorney Heim, our police chief, Fred Ryan, as well as Inspector DeFrancisco, because uh, quite a few people noted that uh, when they watched the, the hearing, that Attorney Heim and others uh, conducted that evening. And it certainly covered every single gamut, certainly recognized the seriousness of um, the issue before this board uh, for a second offense, uh, certainly covered the gamut in terms of uh, affording everybody their uh, ample and uh, their due process. Um, and uh, uh, quite a few people, you know, from going into Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, et cetera, have really commented on and complimented um, the hearing that this board held um, under the auspices of Attorney Heim, as well as uh, the seriousness with, with this matter was discussed, deliberated, and decided upon. So I really wanted to pass that on because, you know, it's, uh, I won't say very rare that a good number of people bring up a certain agenda item at the Board of Selectmen, but um, it wasn't just the, at the hearing we held, but it was working with our uh, town officials that allowed us to effectuate um, the end result. Mr. Greeley? Yeah. Um, um, I also got a lot of comments, uh, actually, uh, on both sides of things, but certainly that uh, we are being very strict about this. We need to clear up the discrepancy between the minutes we've already approved uh, Mr. Carroll recommended 14-day suspension within six weeks uh, and uh, voted with three days additional suspension for underage serving to be served within 30 days. And this says a five-day suspension. So I'm pretty sure Mr. Carroll withdrew that uh, five days to two days served concurrently, and we voted on just plain three-day suspension. Mr. Carroll? Yeah, I, I actually never put the motion of the five with the two days concurrent. I put it out as a matter of discussion, but uh, I didn't feel any traction, so that's, I, I, re, I think I said, let's just keep it clean, just to keep it straightforward. So mm -hmm. I, my motion, as I recall, that stood with the uh, 14 and three. Okay, then, then I misunderstood because um, I took the conversation as when we have a violation for serving to underage patrons, 
it's a three to five day suspension that we wanted to take the position that we took this very seriously. It would be five days. And then uh, several of my colleagues had said that, um, you know, adding up the total number of days, uh, that that might be quite cumbersome. And I said that I was uh, content with going on the record with the five day suspension, and I know I stated this, with two of them, two of the five to be served concurrently with the original 14 day suspension and the remaining three of the five to be uh, served uh, at Mr. O'Gwin's request from August 1st to August 17th, immediately thereafter, but uh, that I wanted to make it clear that with this second offense, but technically it's a first offense. The first offense was the issue with the gentleman and when he was drinking and leaving the establishment and as a result of drunk driving lost his life but that with in terms of this first offense for underage uh serving un underage minors alcohol that instead of giving the three days which we have done in other cases we would give the five but only impose three actual days so i guess i would ask mr Greeley. um what i would like to do is just to have on the books if um we see them before us again with the warm weather and the outdoor cafe that um, we have memorialized that on their second offense it was the five days, which was the max we could give them three to five, but we only imposed an actual additional three days on the 14-day suspension. And that was kind of how I went along with, just with my remarks saying they would be back before us again, and lo and behold, they were. So um, how do you feel about that? Well, I feel that Mr. Kira just told us what he, what the vote was, and that's what I agreed with. I don't know whether the board remembers. I didn't agree that we should give them additional suspension, additional days suspension. I felt 14 days was a very serious suspension. So I understood clearly, I understood, I, what you just said, we certainly discussed, but I understood Mr. Kira to say that what he just said, that he, he did away with that uh, two days concurrent and made it a three-day additional suspension, so now they have to be closed for 17 days. So that's what I agree with, but I'm one of five, so. That's how I remembered it as well. Mr. Dunn. Uh, my understanding is consistent with what Mr. Carroll said. We certainly could reopen it and re-vote, but I definitely, I know, I, my recollection was that um, Mr. Kiro had been leaning towards five days, and uh, some of us weren't ready to go to five days, and so we came down to three, and then he briefly suggested that we could do the two days concurrent, and I remember, I mean, I think probably my facial expression told him that he wasn't getting any traction on that idea, <laughs> though you all, you three can't see the facial expressions that I send to Mr. Kiro sometimes. Uh, because, and I don't, uh, and I believe, if I remember correctly, that when uh, Mr. Heim repeated that back to us, I heard the, the 14 and 3. I did not hear the 14 and 5. So I feel like I voted on 14 and 3. Uh, and we could certainly retake the vote, I think, and, and you know, resolve it. And then, we, you know, that would certainly, you know, rather than talk about what we talked about, we could just do it again, I would think would be one option. Okay. <clears throat> Is that it for my colleagues, or? Yeah, that, that, that's I, I, it. I, what I, or it was in the course of discussion, it, it seemed clear that we didn't have um, any traction. And so I, I, I do recall saying, let's just keep it clean. And I didn't actually put, put the, the uh, five with two concurrent in, as a motion. But okay. it was part of the discussion. I have uh, passed the gavel to the vice chairman, who will now run the meeting. Sure. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, on the second offense by Common Ground, and we'll be talking about a third soon in my opinion, that for the second offense where it's under our rules and regulations, we can impose three to five days that I move, we impose a five day suspension, two of those days to be served concurrently with the initial 14 day suspension, suspension that we held in abeyance when they came in and said they took this matter extremely seriously and were chagrined and ashamed and would not be back again, and they were. So my motion would be to uh, impose on the second offense for serving underage minors the maximum five-day 
suspension, two of those days to be served concurrently with the initial 14-day suspension and the remaining three to be served consecutively th thereafter at the end of the 14-day suspension. I'll other, second the, that. And the other terms as written relatively the same? Correct. Thank I'll, you. I will second the motion. Motion by Mrs. Mahan, second by Mr. Kuro. I have, I have a question. Um, if, if we, so if we don't approve this motion, does it default back to what we have in front of us? I, I think the, Mr. Byrne, I think the best way I would articulate um, our posture right now is that I put a draft decision in front of you. There's disagreement about whether that draft decision uh, reflects the vote of the board. Uh, and, Ms., uh, uh, and, and the chair has uh, essentially said, uh, if the board does not agree that this is what's uh, the vote, she's essentially saying, let's amend it to make this the vote. If, um, if, if so that, that, that's what I think the posture is. Um, Otherwise, absent that, I think what you would have to do is vote to say, I want the town council to amend to change what he's, he's written up. So that's my understanding of, of the chair's motion. You have written it up now. Yeah, I want to be, yeah. Mr. Byrne, yeah. Ms. Mahan's motion would make, if the board adopts it, would make the motion consistent with the draft that's before you. Yeah. So, I would put it this way, Steve. Uh, to me, I think the very important thing is that the will of this body be done. I say that when the town meeting is meeting, it's the will of the body, and it's the will of the board, this board that's done. And we currently have disagreement over what happened, and so therefore, it's simply appropriate for us to make a motion. If Mrs. Mahan's motion carries, you know, it gets to three, then it's the motion, and if her motion should fail, I think we should have a different motion that goes the other way and see if we can get to three with that one. So I think basically we're, re, we're redoing this conversation, but you know, if that's, you know, sometimes that's the right thing to do. Mm. I, I mean, I, I guess I, I would say if we are going to, am I, do I still yes, have the table? Still, yeah, you're still there. Um, I think that if we are, were going to reopen this discussion, I think that having all parties were here would, would be an appropriate way forward. Um, and I, I just want to be sure that if I, um, if I do vote against Ms. Mahan's motion, that their default won't be no penalty at all. I think no matter what, and Mr. Heim can correct me if I want, no matter what, this board has to finalize a draft. Mm -hmm. So until we finalize a draft one way or the other, there is no penalty. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Heim, but, right? May I? Uh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Please, uh, go ahead, Mr. I want to be crystal clear what we're voting on, though. Are we voting the actual penalty that we would like to see, or are we voting on what we believe the, the decision was last time around. She's made a new motion. New motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll speak to my motion okay. when okay. I have the chance. All right. So does that answer your question? That answers my question. Doug, I'm going to go with the discussion unless you have a legal point you want to make. Mr. Greeley. Well, you know, I just feel four of us said here tonight, we believe this is what we voted, and it's in the minutes of the meeting. And it's absolutely unfair for us to add any additional pen penalties without having now the owner here, the, the town, the council who was here, we've already gone through all of that, and four of us remember it one way. And so uh, I'm gonna vote against Mr. Mahan's motion. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I think one of the things that I really try to pride myself on when running these meetings, as well as I know that night I really struggle with the decision of once again, in my opinion, kowtowing to Mr. O'Gwyn <clears throat> for whatever reason, and in my opinion, going lenient on him, I remember saying that I, I would be amenable to, instead of opposing the actual five days, to uh, the discussion that was had by this board to make it only three and sort of grandfather the other two in. I don't know why this is such a sticking point, if it is for some of my colleagues, um, in the sense that it's still the same punishment. It's 17 days. Uh, it's 14 and three. It's not changing anything. Nobody's being treated unfairly. Uh, I'm feeling a bit frustrated that when this uh, gentleman came in initially, and in my opinion, and I've said this to his counsel and to himself, was arrogant, didn't take myself seriously as a member of the board. I'm not gonna speak to my colleagues. And I said from the get-go from that night forward to my colleagues, he will be back because he's gonna offend again. I'm still of that position. And the reason why I am advocating for this position, which does not change the punishment, it's still 17 days closed in August, 
but that we show that where other people have come in and committed this uh, offense, and we've given them three versus four or five, that we go strongly on record because we take this matter seriously, because there is no affinity for common ground or anything else. Um, they are a repeat violator, and I want to go down so that if they do come back a third time, and we need to lay the framework for possible revocation for their next serious offense, which I feel confident will occur, that we have on record, we gave them the most severe five, but we also acquiesced and grandfathered two of those days in, which was the discussion that we had and I surmised at the end of the statement. It's still a seven days, 17 day suspension in the end. However, if I, I, I can't garner the votes for that because for whatever reason, um, I have less credence or standing than this repeat offender does, Mr. O'Quinn and his staff, and he still hasn't fired the general manager. In my opinion, he fired the people low on the totem pole um, and still has that management team in place. Um, then obviously Mr. O'Quinn and um, his employees and representatives um, make a better case to a majority of the colleagues than I do. So I just wanna go on, on record that that was my opinion. That's why I agreed to, in my opinion, going light on them and not giving the full five days actually served. It's still the same penalty. It's 17 days that he agreed to that would be easiest for him so he can close down August 1st through 17th, which Arlington's very slow in the summer. We all know that, and he knows that. The true victims here are his employees that he pays whatever it is, $2.35 as a waiter or a waitress, um, they're going to lose those 17 days. I think he's not going to take that much of a hit. So I guess I would um, implore if I could get at least two of my colleagues, I want to send a very loud, clear message of the seriousness of this repeat offender so when he appears before us for a third time, we have solid standing if revocation is what the majority of the board wants to do, we've laid the framework for that, and I won't say anything else to this. Mr. Chair. Mr. Carroll. So I, I will vote for Ms. Mahan's motion. I'm going to vote for it just because I had put the discussion out there in the, in the first place. And, and I, I feel that I kind of contributed to some of the confusion by doing that, not clear, making it clear whether it was motion or not. I suspect it's going to go the same way. It's the same reason that I didn't, uh, I didn't put it as a motion in the first place. I'll vote my conscience now that the motion is on the table, but I suspect it's the same result. Mr. I, I, if people don't consider a 17-day suspension of a license to a business a serious, serious matter for this board to undertake, uh, um, it, it's just wrong to, to now take this vote and change things on this punishment for these people, in my opinion. But it's my opinion. Still 17 days. Yeah. Uh, I, Ms. Mon, I'm... Um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to support your motion uh, in the same, but I, I do want to be very clear, despite, despite a, a couple of things that I may have inferred from your speech, that it's not because I don't have respect for you or, or because I don't have respect for the other people, it's because I think it's the right choice, and I'm, that's where I'm going to be. Uh, is there any further discussion? On a motion from Mrs. Mahan, second by Mr. Curo, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. 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 By a vote of two to three, that vote is defeated. I move that we, um, uh, we, we follow the minutes of the meeting and it's a three-day suspension served uh, after the 14th. Second. Second. Uh, made by Mr. Motion made by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Curo. Any discussion from the board? I, I just want to clarify, I will be voting for this motion. Um, I believe we need to have a unanimous vote on uh, any penalty that we oppose, impose upon uh, common ground so that when we do see them again, um, we can stand as a united front. So I just want to explain for anybody following this uh, that it's not that I'm switching or changing midstream. I'm doing what I think is the best we need to do for this Board of Selectmen when we do deal with Mr. O'Gwin and common ground again in the future. I appreciate that explanation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Heim, do you have everything you need? Um, if the board is so inclined for this sake and, and there's no member of the board who has uh, an objection, uh, I, 
I think if, when the board takes a vote, it can it can sign the decision tonight, and I can make the administrative changes to reflect three days uh, actual service, three days actual suspension versus five with two served concurrent and all that kind of stuff. I can do that if, if, if the board's comfortable. Is everyone comfortable with that? If they're not, it's not a rush on my part. So moved, I mean, do you want Yeah, Mrs. Mahan, is that, would you rather we could revisit or would you rather administratively move? I, I, I want to get this done tonight. Thank so you. And I, I can count. Mrs. Kropelka. No, I, I have it up when, when he changes if the last sheet is already free to sign and it will be hand delivered tomorrow okay. by a police officer. Mm -hmm. And can I just, tonight. Mrs. Mahan. one question at our last hearing, when Mr. O'Gwin for over a year and a half has blatantly ignored us because he doesn't take I us seriously. Did he notify us that he, no, did he notify us as he said he would, or did one of us drive by and not see the Guinness up? Because I asked him for in writing because he can take it down that night, but he can put it back another day. So did he comply with what he agreed to do? I anything in writing, but I did go by and it was down the right. next day. No, but did he comply with notifying no. us in I writing? Say, I would say he did not in writing, no. Oh. The seriousness he takes this board, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Is that a five vote? Five zero vote. Anything else in the issue? Come on. I guess I would just say if you could follow up with a letter to Mr. O'Gwin, if he could comply with what he agreed to, or maybe town council with his attorney. Actually, if it's appropriate, uh, Mr. Chaplain, um, where he agreed that he would do that and would officially notify us in writing that he's complied with that. I just want it in writing that he did that, so if and when he puts that Guinness or other um, alcoholic banners, umbrellas back up, we can say, hey, you said it was down as of this date, and now they're back up again. Because I have a feeling with the lax attitude over there, some of them are going to go back up. That's just my personal request, nobody else. Uh, agenda item 12, for approval, 1207 Mass Ave. Uh, disabled Veterans RFP, uh, if I could turn it over to Attorney Heim, our Town Council. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, what you have before you is a draft RFP for 1207, the sale of 1207 Massachusetts Avenue, uh, what was long, known for a long time as the DAV Club. Uh, this the board will recall, uh, per the <coughs> directive of this board, the town manager uh, had issued a RFP for a lease of the building based on some public feedback. Uh, we didn't get any responsive uh, bids for leasing the space, and so accordingly, we developed the RFP for the sale of the building, uh, trying to implement the criteria as far as we understood it. The major feature of this RFP is the minimum price that's set, as well as uh, based on our best understanding of the board's uh, thinking on these issues and in consultation with the planning director and the town manager and others, the requirement, uh, well, not the requirement, but the advantageous bidder uh, committing to a deed restriction for mixed use. In other words, when we sell the property, we can put conditions on the sale. Uh, one of the conditions that seemed to be most uh, attractive to the town was the idea that this wouldn't uh, just be uh, committed to residential or even potentially just to commercial, that the highly advantageous bidder would commit to uh, mixed use in furtherance of some of the recent zoning bylaw changes and the master plan. Uh, it may be a little bit more complicated because the property is one property sandwiched in between two other commercial properties, uh, but uh, we've structured it in a way that advantageous bidders would maybe pre present an alternative way of achieving, a sim uh, of assuring us of a similar type of end. Uh, I do have, uh, I should note that the planning director who's going on vacation tomorrow and has been working very hard to try to uh, attend to a lot of different things, um, did give me some informal notes uh, that if the board was so inclined to approve this RFP, I could make a few technical changes. She would like the definition of mixed use to be a little bit more specific in the goals section. I don't think that's a problem because I have defined mixed use elsewhere and I could easily insert that in instead of, I believe, my um, maybe not so muscular language was myriad of uses mm. under, um, mixed use. Uh, she'd also like to uh, add a little bit more clarity to the community benefits in terms of what we would be looking for. So she wanted me to include a little note on that an advantageous bidder would increase foot traffic, provide jobs in Arlington, um, 
And then finally, she noted that um, she just wanted us to double check and make sure that we had sufficient means in the supplemental documents that usually get attached to these types of RFPs to outline how we would be assessing people's uh, financial uh, posture to uh, suitably bid on the building. So we don't want somebody to bid on it, be the successful bidder, and then not end up being able to pay for it. Uh, the documents that we ask as a standard part of this are usually sufficient, but we could add you know, one or two type of things that if the board was so, so inclined about financial statements, portfolios, things like that. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I know that the town manager has also worked on this uh, and, and directed the development of the RFP um, in terms of some of the substantive pieces. Mr. Byrne? Um, I just want to say that I want to, I'll move approval of this language as amended um, through Doug's comments. Um, I really like the process that we used for this. Um, I know it's going back uh, quite a while now. It feels like it's been a, a, since we had our open hearing here about potential leasing it. I still think that was the right way to go. Um, we, we listened to the community and I'm, I'm really excited about seeing the responses to this, uh, particularly um, in terms of the mixed use on the property. I think that it is, um, it could really um, liven up that area, and um, I'm excited to, uh, to see what it yields. So thank you. Motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn? Uh, so I'm curious, in the comparative uh, quality evaluation section, you know, uh, where the mixed use things you're talking about, this highly adv advantageous, advantageous, not advantageous, all that stuff. And then we talk about, like, when it says, um, this is just me not knowing enough, I think, about how RFPs works. But it says purchase price evaluation criteria. It says it's going to be based on the highest proposed price. So how does, how does the, you know, these qualitative ones versus the price interplay? So when we issue um, an RFP, unlike an invitation for bid, we're saying that price isn't the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. So that in theory, someone could offer a higher price. But if the rest of their proposal was basically not advantageous, we wouldn't go with that. And mm -hmm. I've described the process. Obviously, the selectmen will have the final say on the disposition of the property along with the, the town manager in terms of selecting the most responsive and advantageous proposals. But um, the minimum price is set, <coughs> $750,000. But let's say someone offers $900,000, but they don't intend to dedicate anything to mixed use. They want to, their, their firm commitment is to, you know, a, a basic residential development and you know, they're, they're really not, they didn't want to partake in the optional presentation, all that kind of stuff. We could say, well, it's great that they offered that, but we've got an offer at 850 that we think better suits the town of Arlington, would impact the neighborhood more positively instead of negatively. That's essentially what that means. You could, in theory, set up an RFP where the price proposal is completely separate and you basically score it without any regard to price, uh, but that's not the way that we've set this up for reasons that I think the board can well appreciate. Mm -hmm. So the answer is basically that we, like, am I, can I correctly interpret this then, that we get to apply our judgment and just do what we think is right and that with, essentially without limitation except for the 750? And the other minimum criteria, but yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Greeley? Yeah, so uh, just because I'm stupid. So on the bottom of page one. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Oh. <laughs> on the bottom of page one, it, it talks about the structure, the growth structure, the area, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So a growth structure, basement, 13,389. What's SF? Does that mean square footage? Oh, my goodness. I think, I'm sorry. This must be an error. Um, yeah, how can the whole thing no, be 4,600 square sorry. feet, but the basement is 13,000, and there's a second floor yeah. and a one-story brick and stuck? No, no, I, I'm sorry. That's, that's my fault. I was using a template that we have. Oh, 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 buildings, oh, oh, oh. And I apologize. Oh, that's oh, oh, that's okay. a sloppy mistake. I apologize I'm for sorry. that. No, no. So the uh, the lot area is 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 uh, four thousand six hundred forty-five square feet. Okay. And okay. then the um, total area, I want to say, is, is about twenty-seven hundred square feet of usable space. It's one story in a basement. I'm I'm so sorry. No, about no, that. that's okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just perhaps two questions. Uh, just sort of the first uh, preamble that Attorney Heim spoke of regarding, and I was half paying attention, I apologize, um, in terms of, I think you said the planning director or planning department asked you to incorporate uh, more definitive or explanatory language regarding mixed use under the goals, section C. Uh, do you know what it is? Is it, is it the mixed use 
uh, uh, multi-use? Is it the pedestrian oriented or she wants that whole uh, recitation further on in the document to be included under item C? So I think what, uh, the, uh, Madam Chair, I think what the planning director would like is to, in, in that definition, there's examples of the types of things that are allowable under mixed use and I think she'd like me to insert some of those in the goal section so it's clear mm -hmm. on what that would be. It, and I'm fine with that. Um, I, I just would be curious if she wants to um, incorporate the entirety of the mixed use explanation or if there's a particular facet or facets of it that she wanted to include. So after this is drawn up, um, I'll, I'll make it a point along with my colleagues to see what it is that's highlighted because it's sort of three um, tenets of that that's discussed what mixed use. One is, you know, at least two mixed uses and the other one is pedestrian oriented and I'm blanking on the third and fourth point. So, um, right. and then my only other question would be just because this was um, brought up to me um, under, I think it's a goals again, <clears throat> where we're talking about restriction, uh, agreeing subject to the 40 year deed restriction regarding the development. Is there, is that hot and firm, hot and fast in terms of that restriction? Or um, my thing is I'm hoping it's hot and firm in terms of that restriction or is there a scenario where somebody could come in, say this is what I want to do, pie in the sky, it's going to do everything that you all asked for, I'll agree to the restriction 40 years and then they come back before the board three five, seven years down the road and say, well, I no longer can abide by that and you need to allow me to do something else. Do you know what I'm saying on that? I do, uh, Madam Chair. Generally speaking, once you've got a deed, uh, a restriction recorded with a deed, it's very, very, very difficult to upend that restriction. Now, of course, you know, some of that has to go along with the permitting process and the sale of property and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's different levels of due diligence that would have to be done when you're talking about something that would last 40 years. You know, let's say 25 years from now, somebody wants to change the use to a single use. Um, there has to be some level of diligence with respect to that, uh, whether it's from, you know, a permitting perspective or from another perspective. And generally speaking, I think we've you know, got an excellent track record in Arlington with respect to those types of things. Uh, but it's always a risk that, you know, when you have any type of restriction that, you know, if somebody doesn't pay attention to the restriction and it's not caught, I, I guess in this particular circumstance, um, I think what we'd probably be looking at is that what we're hoping to find, and the town manager can cor correct me if I'm wrong, is an applicant who wants to do something with this space that's probably going to be investment that would keep that physical redevelopment of the space, you know, within a 30-year range of its own. Uh, the type of investment that's going to be needed in this property is going to be one. 40. Well, the restriction would be for 40. I'm just trying to be practical oh, about, okay. you know, if you put the money into redoing that space, Madam Chair, I think that it would be very difficult to see somebody, you know, trying to convert it back to purely residential or purely commercial within that time frame, given how much money would have been invested in, in, in putting it that way. Okay. And am I correct? I don't see any sort of inherent or subvert liability in here for a future Board of Selectmen that if that case in point did come up and they stood firm and fast and denied along with other town um, bodies uh, and say, no, we need to hold you to the letter of this. I don't see any liability under what's contained here in this agreement that would fall, befall upon the town of Arlington. So we're not, do you know what I'm saying? I think I do. I think what you're, uh, Madam Chair, let me, if correct me if I'm wrong, I think what you're, concern is, is like, let's say we put a restriction like this on this property and somebody comes along 20 years later and says to that board of selectmen, you need to let me do something different with this. This is, you know, a constructive taking or something crazy. It, that would be a very, very, very hard legal argument to make. I, I just, I'm not even sure, you know, you accept a restriction, it's got a time frame on it. You know, once it's recorded with the deed, it's very, very difficult, again, to say that you didn't know what you were getting into because anybody who buys that property subsequently is going to find that recorded with the deed and you know they, they would be out of luck if they tried to assert that it that they didn't know or mm -hmm. something of that nature. All right. 
and I, I want to thank my colleagues. I want to just have this discussion on the record that if a future board of selectmen years down the road needed to sort of have a foundation sort of established, um, similar to when we get referred back to something the board voted on in 1997 when I was sitting in the audience and not up here, that we, we, we've sort of done that just to not tie the hands of future, our future colleagues. Mr. Kiro. Thank you. Um, I just want to be crystal clear. I mean, we have the comparative criteria, which are, which are all graded, obviously, and they're, they're so, in effect, each of those goals becomes optional if you only had one bid and, you know, or, or whatnot that met the, the uh, minimal purchase price. But it looks like under the disposition terms, um, the purchase and sale does have to have the restrictive covenant that, 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 um, God bless you. That, uh, bless you. The points to that um, concerning mixed use uh, development. So, in essence, well, I mean, why why is that even included as a comparative? Um, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Kuro. I mean, I, I've sort of toyed around a little bit with how to best articulate that under the RFP. Obviously, um, you know, when we issue an RFP, we don't want there to be. We want it to be as clear as we can, um, uh, but. You know, there, there, there would be obviously some wiggle room with something like that as a condition of sale if we didn't get anybody who was willing to accept a, cons a restriction and we decided that they were responsive, obviously that wouldn't be a required condition of the sale. Do you understand what I'm saying? So basically when we issue the R R RFP, we're trying to have there be as little ambiguity as possible, but it's not a minimum criteria to uh, accept the um, restriction. So. As a condition of sale, that would obviously be something that would be negotiated out of the condition of sale. Well, I, I, I understand that, but it says the purchase and sale shall include a, a restrictive covenant meeting the description set forth and points to the, the mixed use clause. I'd be happy to edit it so it says so, uh, as a condition of sale as appropriate or as, as, as determined by the, the, the bid. Just trying to make sure it's, sure it's clear. Is it a requirement or is it a comparative okay. criteria? Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, any further questions, clarifications? If not, on a motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go to agenda item 13. Vote approval, opening of community uh -huh. choice aggregation public record review period. Mr. Chapelain, our town manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so as the board recalls, the board voted favorably and then town meeting voted favorably to uh, accept the community choice aggregation program. Uh, and at town meeting, uh, I had walked through the steps that would need to be followed. And the next step uh, after town meeting's action was the drafting of uh, aggregation plan. And then the steps after that began a regulatory process with DOER and DPU, uh, state, state level agencies. Uh, so the, an aggregation plan has been drafted by Good Energy, the consultant that the town has hired after being part of the MAPC uh, regional procurement. Um, and what the town needs to do next is open up a public review period before officially submitting the aggregation plan to the DPU. The DOER already has a draft plan. Their review is more advisory. The DPU has an official review before they allow the town to move forward with uh, the actual aggregation. <coughs> so what I'm asking for the Board of Selectmen to do tonight is announce that there will be a three-week period to submit written comments. The statute only requires a two-week period, but we're going to offer a three-week period to commence tomorrow, June 21st, and end on Tuesday, July 12th. Uh, and during that time period, we will have a special public hearing uh, in the Lions Room next Wednesday, June 29th at 7 o'clock to receive any oral comments that citizens might have. Also, citizens can submit written comment to town manager at town.arlington.ma.us. Uh, we'll make a copy of the <coughs> aggregation plan available on the website. We'll make a paper copy available in the board's office, the town clerk's office, the town manager's office, and the library. Um, and I think I started by saying the website. Uh, when that's all done, when the public review period's closed, we've received any comments, we may make any edits as necessary, and then be back before the board at its meeting of July 18th to officially adopt the aggregation plan and officially send it to the DPU. Just a housekeeping question. Um, for the three-week comment period to um, commence June 21st, 8 a.m., and close July 12th, 4 p.m.? That sounds fair. Um, is there... Motion by my colleagues, first off. Um, move approval. Mr. Dunn. Second. Seconded by Mr. Byrne. 
Uh, any further questions, Mr. Kiro? Yeah, I just had one one question. I, I noticed that we're um, seeking a waiver of a qu quarterly um, mailing or a quarterly notification. Um, <clears throat> it looks like quite a few other towns and cities. So on, this is on page five of the plan. It says the uh, department has determined that for municipal aggregators, the distribution would normally be made by individual mailings to customers. Yeah, if this is something the board's not comfortable with, we can certainly remove it. I, I'm not necessarily not comfortable. I just I was wondering what kind of discussion there had been about that because it's obviously it's a, it's outreach, and I don't know if the law requires us to have independent mailings concerning this, or can it be an insert, for example, in the water bill or in the property tax bill? <coughs> Those are hard slots to come by uh, in, term, in yeah, terms yeah, of space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I can inquire with the, with the team from Good Energy before we finalize it. Yeah. Mr. Dunn. Adam, were you planning on including this in one of the town emails? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Perhaps our friends at The Advocate can let some people know too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne to open a three-week common period, June 21st, 2016, 8 a.m. to close July 12th at 2016, 4 p.m., as well as the public meeting on June 29th and any um, emailed, snail mailed, et cetera, mailed uh, public comment until then. Any further discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. We now have correspondence. Oh. Sorry. Correspondence received. Resignation from Tree Committee, Sally Nash. Uh, a recommendation from our Chair, Howard Muse, of our Transportation Advisory Committee regarding Highland Ave at High Haith Road, as well as a correspondence by Ms. Devaney and Mr. Kuhn regarding um, the basketball court uh, in the Magnolia Park plans. Is a motion to receive by? So moved. Mr. Byrne, seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn. Any discussion on any of these items, Mr. Kiro? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to move that we refer the correspondence concerning Magnolia Park to the Park and Recreation Commission. Okay. Um, and I think, unless my colleagues or the town manager corrects me, the uh, recommendations from TAC are pretty self-explanatory and everything's in the works to effectuate those recommendations. I'll follow up with DPW to make sure that they are. Okay. On a motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Dunn, with a friendly amendment to uh, move to forward the uh, correspondence from Ms. Ms. Devaney and Mr. Kuhn to our colleagues <coughs> in the Park and Rec Commission. Any further discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now come to new business. Mrs. Kropalka. Attorney Heim? No new business, thank you. Um, our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine? Just a, a few brief pieces of new business. Uh, had a, quite a few public meetings last week, but one in particular I want to mention, we had the Mass Ave Phase Two uh, presentation of conceptual plans. We held it in the Senior Center uh, in the main gathering room. I'd say we probably had 40 or 50 people in attendance. Uh, the team from VHB, planning, DPW, um, I think did a good job presenting, answering questions. There was great feedback. Uh, from those in attendance. Um, I, I noted to others attending the meeting that there was very, I felt, positive engagement where criticisms were offered of the concepts that were presented, but also support of different aspects. So it was, it was a very sort of good push and pull about how we can get to a project that everybody can get uh, their head around. So uh, we'll, um, we'll continue working on that and have something more final in terms of a concept uh, in the fall. In the interim, uh, if the board uh, I, I can forward a copy to the board. It's also on the website. But if the board has any feedback about any of the alternatives, please let us know so we can incorporate them as the concept is, uh, is finalized. Uh, next, I wanted to let the board know um, the management analyst position in my <coughs> office had been posted internally. Uh, and we actually moved Amy Fidalgo, who had been serving as the CDBG administrator in the planning office for just a very short period of time. Um, had she very clearly expressed to me that had the management analyst position been open when she went for that job, she would have uh, been interested in that. She's been part of the MMA Suffolk MPA program, has an interest in municipal management, so we'll be bringing her upstairs in a couple weeks. Uh, so very excited about that. She's demonstrated herself as being very talented, helped us get through the budget preparation process over the past year uh, when 
the then deputy manager, Andrew Flanagan, left. So very excited about that. Uh, and then finally, this is kind of an interesting one. Um, we'll be sending out notice via the town notices uh, tomorrow. Uh, this, the local company Boston Dynamics is going to be testing one of their bipedal robots on the bike path on Wednesday. They needed a straight stretch of asphalt to test this robot. So they'll be doing it off peak hours, not during morning rush or afternoon rush. They'll have a team of engineers in front and, front and back and around it, and people can come and go so it won't impede traffic. Uh, but they'll be testing it to see if it can go about 5 Ks under its own power. Uh, so if you're on the bike path between 9 and 3 on, uh, on Wednesday, don't be surprised if you see a robot walking down the bike path. <laughs> So they've actually, I don't know if you, that company has been getting a lot of press in the last big, few months. Big dog, yeah. Right, and so I don't know if, uh, how many of you saw this YouTube video that they've got mm -hmm. with like this robot, and then they've got a guy with a pole who like tries to knock it over and stuff like that, and but, and like, and it's fairly, and how it operates relatively autonomously. So that's a, um, it's an interesting company for sure. So let's go. I so could really jump on that and have a great line, but I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to even go there in terms of where the GoBot may want to stop or whatever. Uh, anything else, That's Mr. Chaplin? Thank you. Mr. Guerrilla? Uh, nothing other than we, of course, send our sympathies out to our excellent Marianne Sullivan and uh, Fran for the loss of her father-in-law, which has happened since our last oh. meeting. Uh, and we just hope she and all the Sullivans are doing well. May God have mercy on his soul. Mr. Byrne? Um, so since we last met, um, the Argentinian soccer team was in town yesterday, yes. which is pretty cool. I wish I, <laughs> I, I, I went and drove by and saw a massive bus in front of Tango and chose not to stop, unfortunately. Um, but in more serious business, we had a parking implementation and governance committee uh, meeting last week, or yeah, last the 7th, yep. so last Tuesday. Um, we got a response to our RFP, we got a couple of responses to our RFP for single space meters. Um, we're, it looks like we're gonna go with IPS, who installed our multi-space meters. Um, it was, uh, you could just tell by the responses, it was the right choice. Um, and we're hoping to have those single space meters installed by, the end of October, um, you know, don't uh, don't mark it on mark it on your calendar in pencil just in case anything comes up. But that's what we're aiming for, um, and yeah, no, it, it's been um, so everything's moving along uh, pretty smoothly on, on that front. And I think with the Arlington Center study, you'll see um, some potential changes of the layout, and we're looking at you know maybe there will be some funding from the creation of this business district to kind of alleviate some of those costs otherwise. But we're still looking into that. Okay, um, Mr. Carroll. Thank you. I don't. I don't have much. I, I don't, Mr. Grilly and yourself already had a chance to thank the voters uh, for the extraordinary turnout on um, on Tuesday. You know, anyone who was down at the Feast of the East this weekend, the sidewalks were just totally alive with little teeny kids ev everywhere <laughs> under, underfoot and young families, and it was a really um, a visible reminder of, of why this is so important and uh, it's just so wonderful that the uh, voters you know stepped up um, yeah you're part of it I see I see the manager smiling there uh, you have a teeny tiny yeah <laughs> it's so great that the voters stepped up with generosity so that these young families can you know raise their their children here the way so many other generations have um, been able to do and uh, speaking of festivals, so the Feast of the East was, I think, the third of, uh, you know, every single weekend in June, we have a major festival in Arlington this month, which is extraordinary. We had the Greek festival, then we had Porch Fest, which was phenomenal, despite the weather, Feast of the East. And then uh, the Arlington Live Summer Arts Block Party will round it up um, this weekend, so some folks can come out if they aren't all uh, festivaled out. <laughs> Mr. Dunn. Uh, two things. Uh, one is that I, did, I wanted to also to comment on the election, uh, or the debt exclusion, which is just that uh, that was quite a result. And I think it talks a lot about, uh, you know, the case that was put forward and it talks a lot about the merit of the project. But I think it does also talk about how uh, Arlington is continuing to evolve as a town. And exactly like you said, Mr. Greeley, you know, you have, like losing overrides, winning them 51. 49, winning them 54, 46, you know, winning them 70 to 30. There's, a, there's, you know, we've talked about how that was the first step of, you know, two more overrides. And frankly, I'm fairly heartened that we, you know, we made the case for this last one. We're going to make the case for the ones going forward. And I think it's worth acknowledging that. 
My second item is, M -M. of course, Minuteman. <laughs> uh, so uh, Adam and I hosted a meeting of the 16 towns here in uh, the hearing room. And uh, we had selectmen and town managers and finance committee and warrant committees, you know, depending, like a variety. I'm not sure if we actually got to 16 towns. I was too busy to actually take attendance to make sure. Yeah, I don't know if we had Weston. We don't have, okay. Um, but we had, it was definitely. A, well represented. Yeah, it was, well, it was definitely well represented. Um, Belmont did not change its mind. Belmont has not changed its mind. Uh, and. What was interesting was that I would say that the largest consensus coming out of that meeting was that rather than do what they did already again, which is called the 16D, which is where they vote it and they send it to the 16 town meetings, is that uh, they should just go straight to the 16N, which is the ballot question. And uh, the reason to do that is simply because it's like, you know, if you're not going to, Belmont is signaling quite clearly that their town meeting is not going to change its mind. So why, you know, do that exercise again? And then 16N, you, know, you do the ballot question, and if it carries in all 16 towns, then the project is enabled to go forward. The hitch is, is that if a town votes no at the ballot box, then they could also convene a special town meeting and try to leave the district, which is presumably what Belmont would do and presumably what we would be, you know, given the result that we had Tuesday, unlikely. So I would say, um, you know, the Minuteman School Committee meets next, I think it's July 12th, and I would not be surprised if they don't uh, work to set a vote to be held sometime in, you know, they could do it in August, they could do it in September, they could do it in November. Um, no, they could do it, sorry, they could do it. They have to have everything wrapped up by November 30th. The one really inconvenient thing about that ballot is that state law says that you can only have the ballot open for eight hours, which is just barking mad. And so, Leaf uh, blower. yeah, uh, um, and so that's right. That was the same thing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had forgotten that. Yeah, also barking mad. Um, so we, I'm actually trying to work with to see if we can, you know, race th something through the legislature to get that law updated such that we can do 13 hours because I think that's really that issue deserves, you know, 13 hours of ballot access, not eight. So actually. Um, if I had had time to get it on the agenda for today, I would have, uh, because I'd like this board's support in changing that law from eight hours to 13 hours. That is, was indicated to me by the staff that that was like the support of various boards and select when we were the type of thing that we're gonna move this through the finish line. So can I take that as a friendly request to have right it be on um, in July, at a July meeting? Or yeah, is it? I, uh, um, no. If if I, for the legislative process yep. itself, the with the session ending in July thirty first, so it would probably it would have to wait till next January anyway. Is well, it? they filed it today. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes phone calls work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I agree. It, 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 it's a tough call. I, I think Senate's easier than a House in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just asking are you requesting yeah. anything. Yeah, I guess I, 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 I move that we, that, that we get a sense of the board whether or not we ought to support uh, moving to 13 hours. Second. Are we okay with that, Attorney Hunt? Yeah. <laughs> or to, to... Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, excuse me, Dan. When yeah. do you think that they would have this? My only concern is since Brown will be closed. Yeah. So this state law, which is also, I recall, I will point out, is barking mad. Um, they have 10 days. They technically only have to give us 10 days warning. Thankfully, I think they, they have the good sense to know that that is not feasible. Uh, and I think that they also know that doing it in August would be really hard for turnout reasons and stuff like that. But I don't, there, I, there's no conversation, those conversations haven't really happened yet. But, so I'd say September-ish. I'm sure. July that they're moving from Stratton to the rink into precinct 19. So, and I think it might be, I'm not sure. I'd have to see. I think you have to give them six weeks' notice. I'm not sure if that's <coughs> an election law or not. I'm, so, I'm sorry, not. Madam Chair. Are you asking, are you making a motion to put this on the a future agenda? Or are you making a motion to? I was trying to get a sense of the board. Yeah, um, too late. I don't know that we can yeah, do that I'm sorry. Okay. On, on an issue like this. Yeah. If it was more housekeeping right. or. Yeah, I appreciate that. If, is, is that correct? I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were trying to place it on the agenda for July. Yeah. But. 
Can I, Sitting here today, is there anyone who would oppose that motion? I don't know how much we could uh, discuss I, on that. Well, I mean, I'll let everyone else discuss I, on it. I think you I, might know where I, I would I will go. not in any way represent that this is an official vote of the board. And I will. I'll just ask, I'm asking if there's anyone who's <coughs> it's a bad idea. You can represent. I officially support you on this. All right. Thank you. I'm just not going to engage in the discussion. All right. Just because my profession. Um, our next meeting is, and you're not done yet, Mr. Dunn. Our next meeting is? Our next meeting is July 16th for the goal setting. That's session. what I was going to ask. The next meeting is July, the goal setting. Yeah. That doesn't help you. No, someone can only tell you to. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the thing is, I understand what I understand. we're, the conversation we're not having, but you really can't. Okay. I'm you know fine. what I mean? I do. I'm fine. I'm sorry. It's Mr. Dunn. That's it. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a I guess I am a stickler, whatever. Um, uh, it was already discussed about the debt exclusion. Um, we do anticipate uh, having spoken with uh, spoken with several members uh, today, staying with the commitment as well as um, not necessarily closing out the campaign, but sort of uh, furthering it um, in terms of keeping communication open um, with town and school officials um, to the residents of this town along the process in terms of input as well as anybody who's been adversely affected um, by that. Um, I do know that we had talked about, you know, sort of gathering all the information in terms of not just circuit breaker, but there's probably 10 or 11 other um, ways that we can help voters who might be um, impacted by this financially, whether it's Sanborn, the Widows Fund, Harry Barber, uh, memorial fund that we put in place and uh, my goal will be working with the town manager compiling all that information having it online as well as having it in written form here at the selectman's office so that we can refer people to that um, uh, on behalf of the board of selectmen and town manager would like to extend our condolences to the family of Arthur loud um, uh, husband of our f former library director Mary Ellen Remit loud um, Miss Arthur served on many committees um, throughout the town, town meeting, permanent town building, et cetera. And uh, I'm blanking on, um, I believe uh, burial was private, but there will be a celebration of his life. Um, I want to say a Sunday in June, June 26th, uh, coming up. Um, so I just want to again extend our condolences on that. The last two things that I have, um, one, uh, both are uh, conversations one initial, one ongoing. The initial conversation that I've had with the town manager um, was asking him to explore whether through our police department and or board of health, since one of the, I think, great things that um, Arlington and this board of selectmen is encouraging and approving are um, outdoor seating applications. Um, probably coming no surprise to my colleagues, I certainly have a concern about one establishment um, same anecdotal history that I got that preceded uh, this particular establishment's first and second offenses from a variety of people, over a dozen. Um, I'm hearing uh, loud and clear once again. So I did ask the manager to explore. I think it's a difficult task to do if there's any sort of uh, in, in comport with what we do for when we go in to do our uh, underage uh, patrons uh, check on uh, restaurants and they get a pass or fail if there is some sort of procedure that either a could be implemented for all outdoor cafe seating establishments but more importantly what I'm, I'm looking for is if there's any recourse that if there's a particular establishment that doesn't have a great track record so um, I'm anticipating I'm gonna get a no on both but I just wanted to let my colleagues I've asked the town manager to look into that yeah. I'm just unclear, related to underage drinking? No, related to not adhering to our rule, oh, especially with right outdoor place. seating, okay. allowing people to sit there and take two, three, four, five drinks, and no food being ordered or served. Okay. And once again, similar to the veracity I had uh, with- I feel you, I feel you. I, the same people, okay. you know, and I honestly have not gone down because of family circumstances and it's not appropriate, but it's kind of like, people I really trust that from the whole range that that's going on. And then the other thing is um, uh, one of the things that I know is ongoing and um, had conversations with the town manager. Uh, we do have our 
new department and position of facilities director when we were talking about the override and maybe, excuse me, the debt exclusion, I'm thinking override of 2011. We were talking about the debt exclusion and um, the commitment to our schools and maintenance and the like. I did hear quite a few times in terms of, um, and some of it's based on fact and some of it's just perception and sometimes the twain shall meet and they're the same in terms of uh, what it is that we're going to do in terms of a maintenance schedule. So I had had just very brief conversations probably a month or two ago and brought it up under new business once with the town manager that once the facility director kind of gets her feet wet and gets on board, um, I would be interested in uh, sort of a, uh, what I would call a maintenance matrix in terms of you know the facilities that she and her department oversee and how she um, sort of is going to set up the framework for, for that. And I just based that on 25 years ago when I worked for the phone company and we just had D-Base 3 and Lotus 1, 2, 3. I set up every trunk, sender, lineman that went outside, 90 something of them, as well as the trades people that worked inside, which were 161, every piece of equipment. you know. And back then that technology wasn't like it was now. So to answer the question that, yes, we're gonna give you this money to renovate, rebuild, um, what is it that we're putting in place? I'd be interested to hear from Ms. Bennett. Bennett. Bennett, I apologize. I won't say that wrong again. Ms. Bennett, uh, I'm not looking for any big long spreadsheet or anything like that, but just something that I and my colleagues can uh, either be told about or actually emailed so that I can say, oh no, this is what we're doing, this is how we're tracking it, this is what the maintenance program is. So when people say to me, they were saying, well, we're gonna rebuild this and are you gonna keep Stick to the upkeep. You know what I'm saying? We'll come present to the board. Okay. I, I, I don't mean to. I'm just trying to, you know, with that. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn by so Mr. Really, seconded by Mr. Cure. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you.